Well, good morning, Cathedral family. On this first day of spring, I pray that this is a time of new growth for all of us as we grow closer to God and to one another. Morning prayer today starts on page 396 of our prayer books. We'll be saying Psalm 2, which is on page 224. So let us begin in prayer. Loving God, on this first day of spring, we pray that our hearts might be born again as we draw closer to you. As our days get longer, our hearts warm to your presence and to the gift of your creation that springs into life all around us. We pray your blessing now and always through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. We will proclaim the greatness of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love of which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, and raised us up with him, and made us sit with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus that he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you and for one another, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 2, which may be found on page 224. Why are the nations in tumult, and why do the peoples cherish a vain dream? Kings of the earth rise up, and the rulers conspire together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds asunder, let us throw off their chains from us. He that dwells in heaven shall laugh them to scorn, and the Lord will hold them in derision. Then will he speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury. I, the Lord, have set up my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will announce the Lord's decree, that which he has spoken. You are my son, this day have I begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance the uttermost parts of the earth for your possession. You may break them with a rod of iron and shatter them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, therefore, be wise, O kings. Be advised, you that are judges of the earth. Serve the law with awe and govern yourselves in fear and trembling, lest he be angry and you perish in your course. For the wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are those that turn to him for refuge. Lord our God, our creator, redeemer and sanctifier, we ask you to cleanse us from all hypocrisy, to unite us to our fellow men and women by the bonds of peace and love, and to confirm us in holiness now and forever. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 23. Uh, finishing at uh, chapter 24, verse 9. He wrote a letter to this effect, Claudius Lysias, to His Excellency the Governor Felix. Greetings. This man was seized by the Jews and was about to be killed by them when I learned that he was a Roman citizen. I came with the guard and rescued him, since I wanted to know the charge for which they accused him I had him brought to their council. I found that he was accused concerning questions of their law, but was charged with nothing deserving death or imprisonment. When I was informed that there would be a plot against the man, I sent him to you at once, ordering his accusers also to stand before you that they might have against him. So the soldiers, according to their instructions, took Paul, and brought him during the night to Antipatris. The next day they let the horsemen go on with him while they returned to the barracks. 
when they came to Caesarea and delivered the letter to the governor, they presented Paul also before him. On reading the letter, he asked what province he belonged to. And when he learned that he was from Sicilia, he said, I will give you a hearing when your accusers arrive. Then he ordered that he be kept under guard in Herod's headquarters. Five days later, the high priest Ananias came down with some elders and an attorney, a certain Tertullus, and they reported their case against Paul to the governor. When Paul had been summoned, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, Your Excellency, because of you, we have long enjoyed peace and reforms have been made for his, this people because of your foresight. We welcome this in every way and everywhere with utmost gratitude. But to detain you no further, I beg you to hear us briefly with your customary graciousness. We have, in fact, found this man a pestilent fellow, an agitator among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of a sect of the Nazarenes. He even tried to profane the temple, and so we seized him. By examining him yourself, you will be able to learn from him concerning everything of which we accuse him. The Jews also joined in the charge by asserting all that was true. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for what is right, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for mercy shall be shown to them. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And so we pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our collect for this week. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness. And of your great mercy, keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Father, we give you great thanks for the gift of our bishops. We pray for Peter and Sonia and Charlie, for their families and those that they love, for their staff and for the people that surround them and nurture them. Give them strength and wisdom. Be with them as they shepherd us and love us and guide us. Thank you for all who have been called to serve you in any way. For all clergy, religious, laity, all the baptised who live out their ministry in all kinds of ways. I pray particularly during, for the first peoples of this diocese. We pray and give you thanks for their past elders, their present. And we pray that you might help us to encourage and listen to the emerging leaders within our First Nation peoples. Bless them, give them opportunities to shine and give us ears and eyes to hear and to see their wisdom and their beauty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for 
the leaders of this nation, all of our politicians, particularly during this stressful and busy time. We pray for our premiers, that you might just watch over them, give them strength. We pray for our local leaders, those within our community. Help them to find opportunities to fight for peace and justice, for equity amongst all. Pray for those who are affected by COVID, especially the frontline fighters, for doctors and nurses, particularly those in aged care facilities. We just pray that you will watch over them and protect them during this stressful time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the clergy and people of the parishes of Terrigal, the Camden Hayden, the entrance, and Tukli Budgiboy. We pray for their ministries within the communities that they work and worship, for opportunities that they can reach out into their communities and show something of your love and grace. So just pray for them this day. Uphold them, strengthen them, give them vision and energy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray also for hospital chaplains and the staff and volunteers at Newcastle Hunter Region and Central Coast Hospitals for their patients and the brothers of the Society of St. Francis. So we pray for all who are sick in our region. That you might be with their doctors and nurses, that you might give them insights into how to love and care for those who need it the most. And we thank you for the brothers at Stroud and for all who are in the Society of St. Francis, the in the three different uh, areas of the brothers, the Claire's and, and the, those in the third order. We pray for people who are feeling a calling to that kind of vocation, that they may be encouraged as they explore opportunities in that spirituality. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are on our cathedral prayer list at this time. We pray for those who have recently died and whose anniversary of death occur at this time. And in a moment of silence, we bring before you those in our own life, our family and friends, those that we know who need our prayers. Lord God, these and all our prayers we bring before you, our risen Lord and Saviour. Amen. Lord and Heavenly Father, you have brought us safely to this new day. Keep us by your mighty power, protect us from sin, guard us from every kind of danger. And in all we do this day, direct us in the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us praise the Lord and give thanks to God. May the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord lift up his countenance upon us and bring us peace. So bless you this day and I look forward to praying with you soon. Amen.